Hello, I'm TJ and welcome to my garden. Today is going to be a bit of a diss track. Um, so last time I talked a lot about corn and I promised I wouldn't talk any more about corn. I am going to talk about another grass though, but I'm not going to talk about corn. Uh, and this is not a positive episode. I'm not talking positively about the grass. I am talking negatively about a plant that I somewhat despise. Um, so I live, as I've said many times, in a hot, dry climate. And because of that... We have a lot of Bermuda grass. Now, Bermuda grass can be a pretty good uh, high traffic lawn. Uh, if you grow it in an area and you mow it regularly and tend it pretty good, it can be a sort of coarse but fairly rugged lawn that can put up with a lot of abuse. And especially if you ever have to dig something up or move something or trench or whatever for, say, sprinkler system or pl plumbing or whatever, it's really quick to recolonize. The downside is. It grows everywhere else, and it's horrible. <laughs> um, I am calling you with hands absolutely sore. I feel like I have arthritis, honestly, uh, from ripping up Bermuda grass. So I'm going to go into a little bit about Bermuda grass, uh, the unfortunate realities of managing Bermuda grass as a weed. Um, basically just one big hate mail letter to Bermuda grass. I know it's good for sports fields and a few other things, but it's absolutely horrible for gardeners. So here we go. Uh, Bermuda grass is a grass. Uh, it's a common turf grass. It grows mostly with both stolons. Well, it grows with both stolons and rhizomes. Now, if you don't know what those are, stolons are the little runners that grass and other plants send across the surface. If you've ever seen a spider plant, all those little branches that have the little baby spider plants, those are all stolons. If you've ever seen a strawberry, same thing. All those little, you know, uh, vines that shoot out and then they produce another little strawberry plant at the end those are stolons uh, rhizomes are basically that but underground they're stems that grow underground and produce more plants uh, many of our lilies and irises and our little pretty flowers you see on the ground those have rhizomes the uh, ginger when you buy ginger at a grocery store that is a rhizome um, bamboo if you've ever grown bamboo those ugly little roots seeming roots that grow other plants that is a rhizome it's actually a branch uh, potatoes are well they're called a tuber and it's kind of a separate form of it but essentially it is stem tissue so in a way it's still a rhizome um, rhizomes can be good things right for plants that you want to spread in the case of grasses though they tend to allow them to colonize areas rapidly that you wouldn't want them to colonize because they grow from the protection of the ground of herbivores right now nothing can graze on them underground and they just become a disaster. So why is Bermuda grass horrible? Well, it's not in all climates. In cooler climates, it dies back in the winter. It's not as aggressive. But if you live in a warm, dry climate, uh, it is very aggressive and a quick colonizer. It will spread by rhizome everywhere. And the rhizomes mean that they're hard to get rid of. The stolons make them annoying to get rid of because unfortunately they grow in amongst plants that you won't necessarily want to use an herbicide with. If you're using something like Roundup, you don't want to spray that by your other plants. If you're using uh, any organic herbicides, things like vinegar and stuff like that, that also you don't want to use around other plants. Even if you use species specific herbicides, like herbicides that only attack grasses, uh, often these are growing as somebody's lawn nearby and they're interconnected through the rhizomes and through the stolons. So once you spray them down with that herbicide, that goes back and kills a good chunk of somebody's lawn. So the unfortunate reality is most of the time when you're dealing with them, you're dealing with them by hand. And when you're dealing with them by hand, you're hurting your hand. Because another uh, name for it, a name many gardeners have given it, is razor grass or wire grass. Because those stolons are like little wires and they're stuck into the ground at every node. At every node, they develop a root system. So you're ripping these things up, and they're hard. They actually can hurt your fingers quite a bit if you're doing it by hand. Um, you can use tools. Unfortunately, I don't always get to use tools because uh, at what, the garden where I currently work, we actually have a drip system, and so I don't want to get tools in and around those. So I'm usually ripping it up by hand, um, which is very hard on your hands. But it's the best way to get rid of it is just to rip it out. Um, unfortunately, I wish there, I could say, well, you just spray this and it takes care of it a couple. Nope. The only stuff that'll kill it will kill other things you don't want to kill. So the best way to remove it is to physically remove it. And that is challenging. Um, the first step 
is ripping all the loose stuff off the top, right? All the, because the stolons and the, the branches and all the leaves grow up towards the top in this big mass. And that you could actually rake out, rip out, and you can get a good chunk of it there. But then what you're left with are all these little stolons sticking up from the ground where you can see the rhizomes coming up to the surface. And unfortunately, to permanently get rid of it, you have to rip those all out. You have to dig in, kind of, you know, using a hoe or other thing. You have to chop through the soil and pull out as much of the rhizomes as you can. Um, one of the more effective ways I've found is to do quite a bit of that. So you're spending a good couple of days physically removing as much of it as you can, pulling out as many of the rhizomes as you can, digging out as much as you can, and then you bury it. Um, you bury it in compost or mulch or both, ideally, and you want to bury it at least six inches if you can because it has trouble growing through that much stuff without any access to sunlight. So... That's why they say, you know, if you're going to build raised beds on top of grass, if you do it past six inches, you usually don't have to worry about the grass because it'll usually die before it grows up through that. The same is true to a degree with Bermuda grass. I have seen Bermuda grass occasionally grow through that much, but even then you can just pull up the couple that do make it um, and eventually it will die because it doesn't have unlimited stores of uh, nutrients. But, you know, overall it's just, it's horrible to get rid of um, now it is a turf grass and it actually can be good grass to grow in areas especially where you're gonna have a lot of high traffic the problem is you have to keep that very aggressively edged um, ideally put in barriers like you would with bamboo down to about six inches to keep it from coming up under that uh, and generally keep it mowed relatively tightly and keep those stolons down to a minimum once it forms a nice thick thatch it does start acting like a turf grass it starts putting up more leaves um, if you keep it mowed it won't get quite so tall although it can get pretty bushy and tall um, and you want to cut it obviously before it goes to seed or else it's going to cover everything else and that is the worst part of my tale is i know um i see there was a period where i wasn't able to get to the garden we during our summer i have less physical time out there because I'm working with the kids there more and then during um, our, this summer we had some issues that kept me out of the garden here and there so the gist was this stuff got really overgrown and I know some of it's gone to seed so I know I'm just gonna be doing all this again in a couple months the good news is it does slow down a little bit in the winter but unfortunately our winters aren't that cold so it doesn't stop it just slows down now at my home I actually have a uh, I'm kind of embarrassed to say this. My lawn is probably a lot Bermuda grass and crab grass. <laughs> it's a pretty dense thatch right now, so it's actually looking kind of nice. It's been mowed recently. It's got wasps crawling in and out of it, which I've been watching. Um, I'm hoping they're taking care of other bugs I don't like. I don't hate wasps that much. I just hate them when they sting me, which doesn't happen very often. But anyway, I know it's Bermuda grass mostly, and so I have the same issue at home that I have at work. The difference here is... This isn't my home. I live with family right now. I don't have a garden of my own. That's the unfortunate thing for a garden podcast to be saying. I do work in a garden, so I still garden every single day. Don't get me wrong. But here it's mostly pots and a few parts of the beds I've colonized and am gradually growing. So I haven't dealt with a lot of the Bermuda grass yet, but I know it's coming here as well. It's been in every other garden I've been at because it's an endemic problem here. Uh, Bermuda grass is named for Bermuda, an island that Bermuda grass is nearly eaten because it's not native to there either. It actually comes from Africa originally, uh, but it was brought in accidentally and covers, I want to say most of that island, but at this point, uh, Bermuda is known for these grassy areas it has, and those grasses are Bermuda grass, and they are completely invasive, completely non-native. They've crushed out all the native grasses and everything else. They're a disaster there, and they're a disaster here. If, uh, if kudzu is the plant that ate the south, Bermuda grass is the plant eating the southern San Joaquin Valley. And I really just wish there were an easier way to deal with it. I wish I had good news for you. I wish I could say, this weed, very easy to take care of. You just do X, Y, and Z. But the truth is, you're just going to have to put in the work. Um, and quite frankly, I mean, there, there are worse ways to put in your work than to sit out in a nice garden on a nice day and rip up Bermuda grass. It takes a while, but it's kind of mindless, so you could listen to a podcast like this one uh, and just sort of get to work. The downside is, use tools or it will hurt your hands. I tend to get frustrated with the slow progress I make with tools and immediately just start ripping it up with my hands and then I'm always aching afterwards. It doesn't help that that same day I also harvested a bunch of okra and got the okra itch, which is something I'll talk about in another podcast, I'm sure. Anyway, this one's a little bit shorter, but I just kind of wanted to 
vent some frustrations I'm having with Bermuda grass. I hate the stuff. I really, really do. Um, the other plant I dislike, which will which will get its own diss track episode, Tree of Heaven. If you don't live in a, a hot climate, you probably don't know what I'm talking about. But if you do, I'm sure you've seen this thing everywhere and you share my, my loathing of it. So we'll go into that one in another episode. Anyway, uh, if you want to catch anything uh, I've talked about here, you can go over to tjsgarden.com. I will probably write up a little article because I actually have some pictures of the Bermuda grass I was dealing with. So you can kind of see what I'm talking about. You probably haven't and don't even know the name for it. Uh, but anyway, thank you for listening. Have a great day.